What is up YouTube, Speed Duelist, this is Vault here, back in today with you guys another new Speed Duel Match 2 video. And today we're playing a very, uh, re sort of like a revisit or a revamp version of a deck uh, that we haven't seen for quite a while or heard of. Uh, we're playing the Harpy Lady deck right here, along with Tribal Synergy, so we are mixing in some Amazonas inside here. And we're actually playing against one of the top tier or tier 1 decks currently in the meta, which is the Blade Knight Control. And I gotta say... Uh, this is going to be quite an interesting dual video right here. I would say it's slightly competitive uh, overall rather than just playtesting here. Uh, but at the same time, it was really, really cool seeing this deck in action against it. Because uh, per personally, in my honest opinion, I think uh, the Harpy Lady can go up against uh, Blade Knight Control. Uh, whether if it's against uh, Gravekeepers, I'm not too sure. I uh, haven't really tested out that yet, but you know, probably look into that down the road. So if you guys can give, uh, want to give this deck a try out, you know, definitely give it a try and play against Gravekeepers. But you know, uh, as always, there will be a deck profile posted uh, shortly, a few days after the release of this video. So not to worry about it, absolutely not at all. The exact same deck I played here will be uh, uh, released. Um, as well in that deck profile video so if you guys want to be stay tuned be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you guys don't miss out at all so let's just go straight into it without wasting your time so we did lose the stone paper scissors here and the opponent did uh, want us to go first uh, of course since it's card advantage in this game and I did mention we are playing tribal synergy we are against the blade knight aerosol uh, that's definitely hidden parasite right there but with Tribal Synergy, it's just a really, really great skill to draw and to draw power. I'll go into more detail in the deck profile with this, but you know, let's just go straight into it. We set our Swordswoman uh, right in the beginning, right here in defense, and then we'll set our Wild Tornado and basically pass our turn. And now that they move on to their turn, they set a completely full back row over there to summon the Blade Knight, which becomes 2,000 attack. Which is actually a good move on their end, and that's basically how Blade Knight Control works. You know, they set as many back rows so that they have less cards on their hand, and Blade Knight essentially becomes a 2,000 beater, and they swing in. And because of that, our Amazon Swordswoman basically gets destroyed. We should have played that in uh, attack position, I kind of thought about it, but, you know, it, since it was first turn, it was hard to decide, so we play a little bit more conservative. Drew into a Windstorm and set that, and we play our trainee in defense as well, just turtling a little bit, so keeping our cards a little secret. Uh, against our opponent, so they have to guess a little bit. A little bit of a mind game here. So they play uh, Command Knight, and uh, they swing in with their uh, Blade Knight, and then we just storm it, and right there, and they have to end their turn. Now, going into our turn, we drew into the Elegant Egotist. Honestly, uh, this card is pretty good. It's really good, honestly. Uh, but it's just not the card we're looking for currently, so it's kind of like a dead draw for us at the moment. Flip up our trainee, and then we can go into a little bit aggressive and attack into the Blade Knight with Alzen defense only, which is pretty neat. And we do swing in, and they activate Kunai with Chain. Um, here, uh, with Dueling Book, it's a little bit confusing because with the counters we put, I'm not sure what's wrong with the replay and Dueling Book, but I really hope they fix this. Uh, but they, I think, uh, from what I remember, they did intend to equip the Kunai onto the Command Knight and not the Blade Knight. And the counter is a bit off right here. I gotta tell you guys. Yeah, it's you see, you see, this is supposed to be here, and then, and then, yeah, the the two, the two one counters in the middle should be really on the left side. But you know, that's a mistake on Dueling Book. So just so you guys are clear and you guys are not uh, seeing things, the Kunai is equipped to Command Knight. All right. So ignore the counters, really. Uh, during our uh, around uh, our end of our battle phase, they use their dust tornado to basically pop our back row, which is really good. And we got the wild tornado. And wild tornado is, is a really good card in a harpy deck. Uh, I really, I kind of recommend this card. It's kind of interesting. So now we can basically pop one monster in the field. Then we pop their command knight right there, and it basically get destroyed. And once again, I did mention the kunai is equipped to the command knight, so the kunai is gone as well. So. Now then we can basically pass uh, our turn. Uh, they, the reason they set a card right here is because of Dust Tornado's secondary effect. You're actually allowed to set a card right afterwards. And this is often an effect that many, many people forget uh, because um, they're in some really, really unique and specific situations that your Command Knight uh, might be at 1600 simply because you have two cards in your hand and one of them can be set. And then simply by doing so and setting one of them afterwards, your Command Knight basically becomes 2,000 attack afterwards. And you can give your opponent a surprise and, you know, uh, sometimes utilizing off this can really change the tide of the game for you as well. 
So they set and then we have to end our turn and they draw right here. And right here, uh, Command Knight uh, is still in defense but they got into a Zombina and they're gonna basically put all in frontal attacks and just start attacking us already. Zombina runs over our trainee and uh, Command Knight swings into us for 2,000 damage right there. Which, another hit of that, we're a goner. And um, now we drew into our bird face, and what could we really do? Uh, we could we could attack the Zombina, but you know, they're very likely to have a kunai and stuff like that. So we decided to set for defense, which is pretty neat. And also knowing that Zombina can't destroy this, and they have to forcefully use uh, Blade Knight to attack into us, and maybe force them to use a kunai as well. And so they did use the Blade Knight uh, for the Saber Choice, so, I, so they are thinking a little bit more carefully overall. But with Bird Face, we're allowed to search into our Harpy Lady, which is really, really neat. And then uh, the Zombina swings in. If they do have like two Kunais here, they can basically end us, but I think they only had one or something. So they weren't able to end us just yet. Um, yeah, I would think they would have one only, but... We're still alive and we're still in the game, that's good, so they have to end their turn. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to even pop off Tribal Synergy this game at all yet. It's just, it's just uh, annoying and it's just frustrating, honestly, because if we don't use this skill, basically we're very behind. And this skill is just extremely, extremely important into this deck. Being able to draw three cards is amazing and you, if you don't get it, uh, it's just really unfortunate. So we drew into our kunai and we can summon Harpy Lady and use Elegant Equatist uh, to basically bring out our uh, Harpy Lady uh, sisters right here, uh, which is really neat. And then with the boost of Harpy Lady, it basically becomes a uh, 2250 attack, which is really, really good. And um, right here in our grave, okay, not too bad. Um, we can't summon our Desert Twister because we need uh, two wind and one earth, but we have two earth and one wind monster right here. Uh, but anyways, uh, they does tornado our back row once again, and they did hit that kunai, which is unfortunate because you know if we if we able able to keep that kunai, we can have a really really good position on our side. So we just have to go start attacking and thinking what we want to attack. Uh, here, but we didn't want to attack because we're, we're afraid that that set card right here uh, That they have is probably a kunai and we could just run into trouble We didn't want to attack the zombina because they can also bring out a command knight which makes blade knight even more stronger So we basically pass with it there and unfortunately it turned out to be a ready for intercepting So we predicted predicted wrong and they basically set their uh, blade knight which is interesting Wondering what they're trying to do right here and apparently they're trying to do the air assault so Really unfortunate that we should have attacked during last turn right here. And now basically we lose our monsters and we're completely wiped off clean. And um, yeah, they just flip summon their Blade Knight. So they can flip summon Blade Knight back because uh, ready for intercepting sets them. And they haven't, you know, they haven't summoned yet um, on that turn with the Blade Knight. So they're actually allowed to flip it back up and then basically swing in. And even though they are 2,000, we take half damage, it's 1,000 damage, and that swings in for our game one. And really unlucky, we could have probably played Desert Twister on the next turn if we were able to survive that, but unfortunately, no. So we have to admit defeat right here, and we move on to game two. So for side deck, uh, side deck I believe uh, we sided in some more eliminations and some ready for interceptings as well. If you guys wanna see the full side deck and the whole deck profile, uh, be sure to subscribe once again, hit that like button and stay tuned for the deck profile. We'll be coming out in a few days shortly, so be patient and it will be out. I promise you guys exactly the same deck we played right here. So. Of the side decking done, we just move into our game two. We're just gonna definitely want to go second, of course, since we need that card advantage to even boost off our tribal synergy. And this time, we're looking we're getting into a better hand overall. We're able to get that tribal synergy going off. Uh, so they set their uh, monsters and cards and their back row, and then they basically just pass it off. Uh, usually, a uh, huge suspect right here. They, we can already see the attack, so. Uh, we know it's a Command Knight right here, so I think Dueling Book needs, uh, needs to improve their replay right here. I don't know what's going on, honestly, um, but something basically needs to be fixed here, and it's not right, and yeah. Uh, you know, we're not supposed to see the attack. I know the interface has been smoother uh, with the replays, which is really nice, but you know, this le these needs to be fixed, honestly. So anyways, <laughs> I digress. We go back to the duel. Uh, right here, we immediately use our Tribal Synergy, we review our Harpy Lady Sisters, and also review our Swordswoman, and uh, basically draw one card, which is really neat. Now we have six cards to play with, 
and then we summon a Harpy Lady, and then we can use set our Kunai and use our Elegant Egotist to bring out our Harpy Lady's sisters with high attack. Uh, right here we're sort of thinking what, what should we swing in first. Uh, usually we think it could be a Command Knight, so we want to swing in with sisters. Uh, but no, we decided to swing in with Harpy Lady with 16, just in case it was a Blast Sphere or any, anything like that type of sword, so we don't take as much damage. Um, but they dust tornado that during our battle phase, but okay, sure, you know, they got rid of our Kuna, which is unfortunate. Uh, but we swing in and it turns out to be a Command Knight, just to confirm what it is. We'll take that little bit of damage, which is fine, honestly. Um, with 16 and 19, yeah, we took 300, so we swing in with our sisters next and basically destroy it by battle, which is not too bad. And then we basically pass our turn. Uh, right here they set and they summon the Command Knight, uh, which do, does do have a 2000 attack and they can easily swing into our sisters. I mean, not sorry, not sisters, but Harpy Lady 1. Uh, and then we take that damage. Our sisters become back to 1950 and we're running short on our attack now instead. Uh, so right here we drew into another Harpy Lady. We can summon the Lady 1 uh, to boost up back our sister for higher attack and then attack into the Blade Knight to destroy it. But, you know, usually uh, the back row suspect can be a Kunai and a uh, Blade Knight control deck. So we can, our alternative option is to summon Swordswoman uh, and basically get the second part of Tribal Synergy off. And we want to draw into our cards better, which is much pre more preferable uh, situation than we want to be in. Uh, we can't go into our battle phase, we can't destroy a uh, Blade Knight at all, so we basically just pass our turn right there. Uh, I'm thinking we should have actually like put Sisters into a defense position, uh, which may have been better, but honestly, uh, with a Kunai, they're still going to destroy it, but maybe we take less damage. That would have been a better option, honestly, so our Sisters basically gone right here. 2400 Blade Knight runs into it, and then also Command Knight attacks into Source Wind, and they take 100. So now they pass their turn. We're still good because we have four cards on our hand to play with. We're not we're not completely empty field empty. And then we top deck a warrior elimination. Now this is absolutely cool and insane. Because right here we're just gonna play it, wipe off the board completely, and then we're gonna go string in with strong attacks. We use elegant egotist. Uh remember with elegant egotist, not only you can summon Harpy Lady sisters, you can even summon another Harpy Lady directly from your deck. And being able to special summon directly from your deck is just extremely good. Good uh, card, honestly. So we attack with two 1900 attacks right here, almost going for game. Uh, with 100 life points left right there with the opponent, and they just take both of them straight into the face, and we pass our turn. Uh, right here, they come back at us with this hidden parasite. Uh, I wonder if they talked like that. Yes, they did. What a lucky draw for them. And wiped our board clean as well back there was answering to our warrior elimination and they have to pass their turns because they have no monsters drew into the ready for intercepting now in our turn which is really good so that gives us a good uh, defensive play right there and then we can just play like something like swordswoman and just swing in for the attack and force them to use a kunai windstorm whatever they have and which they apparently have an rfi uh now thinking about that maybe we should have summoned the bird face instead so that they couldn't have rfi but you know usually this middle card could be a kunai as well because if it was a dust tornado, they would have used it by now, and you know they set another card in, in their turn. Now we drew into our Desert Twister, which comes in really neat and handy in the perfect timing overall. Looking into our graveyard, banishing two of our Wind and one Earth attribute monsters to summon our Des Desert Twister right here, and they flip up their dust tornado to pop our back row. Um, there's nothing. There's Honestly, I think the opponent should have waited a little bit and not get too hasty. I think they want to use the Dust Tornado before we start to pop their uh, Spell and Trap. Uh, so it could have leave us to guessing. But honestly, we have chosen this one uh, for the most case anyways, the middle one. Uh, so we pop the middle one and it turns out to be a Kunai. Even though it doesn't matter because we had two monsters, even if they had a Kunai. So we could have swing in right here for game basically. So now... Moving on to game 3. Back to side decking, uh, nothing really changed for us in the side deck. Uh, we're keeping it the same with the warrior limbs and the ready for intercepting. You know, those are really really good cards against the Blade Knight control deck, so nothing changes. Moving on to game 3, and of course we are starting first this time because the opponent gets to choose and see if we can actually win this. So. Really cool, uh, we also play Amazon's Heirloom, which is a neat tech card I play. Uh, we do play enough Amazon's monsters to utilize off of it, and we do play one of this as a really, really cool card. If you guys don't like it, always switch it off with something else with another Amazon's monster, which is totally fine. 
over as well and real happy uh, we're able to tribal synergy first turn uh, by revealing both of our uh, harpy lady one and trainee and basically draw one card right there and then now we can see what we want to do uh, definitely set the rfi we'll set the defense again you know just keep it hidden and pass our turn now Moving them, they, they play their Blade Knight and then they attack. We're definitely gonna RFI that no matter what. To put it face down so that we can swing in for better attacks during our next turn here. And then we also play Harpy's Hunting Ground, which we haven't seen in the first two games, but we finally drew into this in the third game, which is basically essential skill for the Harpy Ladies. And it's just really good being able to pop back rolls continuously and consistently as well. Uh, but there is a downside to this field spell, in my opinion, as well. So we're just gonna go right here. Uh, we're gonna normal summon a Harpy Lady, and we're gonna have to we're gonna pop their uh, back row, which is really neat. Uh, they RF die us. Uh, maybe we should have did the reverse. We should have not flipped trainee up first, then uh, pop uh, pop their back row, so then we could have been done better there. But we just swing in with Harpy Lady one. The reason we didn't play the elegant egotist is because if we play that this card and summon the sisters or another harpy lady we're forced to use a harpy something ground and basically pop itself and we don't want that to happen this is the downside with this uh field spell right here you have to if if, if there's no targets to pop you're gonna have to pop yourself which is really really annoying and i don't like it honestly but so we're going for the safer play so we're saving some cards on their hands so then we have still plays later uh they're gonna hit and parasite us so it seems like they're a little bit more desperate to get rid of our harpy lady this time or I think their thought, thought process is they have to get rid of it. They can't let us use the second part of Tribal Synergy to get even more card advantage. And they're going to start swinging in into us and start attacking for uh, board advantage here. No set cards, which is good. Uh, which means we can go aggressive. And it goes the entire turn. Top decking a Harpy Lady 1, which is really good. So now we can go uh, aggressive and basically use our... Uh, uh, egotist and because we summon harpy lady uh, harpy's hunting ground has to go off and basically we pop it uh, another thing we could have done instead as a possibility was to set the heirloom and pop the heirloom and then you know keep the hunting ground with the attack boost but you know we're just gonna get rid of hunting ground heirloom can come in handy later on as well so we're just keeping it in our hand uh, so we're gonna summon our sisters right here uh, blade knight is at um not at 2,000, it's at 16 since they have two cards on their hand, so we can easily swing in with the sisters right here and then with Harpy Lady 1 as well. And then do massive damage and end our turn. Uh, now it goes to them, they set a card, uh, and then they set another monster. And of course, we can see the attack and, uh, defense, attack and defense of it, but we're not supposed to know what it is. Uh, we drew into Warrior Limb, even better. We can hold off into that just in case when we need it for a handy. Uh, we might think, like, once again, we think the set card might be a Blade Knight, I mean, sorry, Command Knight, so this time we swing in with Sisters, uh, just in case, and it turns out to be a Zombie, you know, bringing out the Blade Knight with 2,000 attack back on the field again, and this can be a bit of a risky situation for us right now. Uh, luckily, they didn't get in the Command Knight or another Blade Knight, because then we basically lose our monsters, and they're going to swing into our Heart Lady uh, with that right here. So, passing it back to us on our turn, uh, we drew our bird face, we can probably worry a limb to get rid of the late night, and we most likely have to because um, if we don't, uh, if we don't, uh, the late night can basically attack into our sisters next turn, but we didn't, uh, we were still holding on to it, we want to we wanna hold on to it because um, just in case they summon more uh, warrior type monsters, we want to get a bigger blow off so we are going for a higher risk higher reward type of play and we swing into the Omi ship and we die as well and we have to pass and we want them to attack into our bird face so we can search for um harpy lady one so yep which does happen and we search for a harpy lady right here now we can probably play the warrior limb for the open board and swing in during our turn here drew into desert twister really neat once again really once again this is a really really good card uh, to play a really ni neat tech card, although this card is much better off in the mid game slash late game. Uh, drawing this in the first turn is just absolutely horrible because um, you know you usually don't have the setup in the graveyard for it. So I only play one. Don't play more than one. If you play two, it just gets very very annoying. So you never want to draw into it. So we finally play our warrior limb right here. 
to, to, to force it out. We have to. There's not no other choices we got left. Looking, checking into our grave uh, to see if we can um, summon Desert Twister, and we can. Uh, they bring back War uh, Blade Knight uh, because they accidentally sent it to grave, and they played uh, RFI to counter our uh, Warrior Limb, and we let them. That's fine, honestly. Um, I think they just misclicked. So uh, unfortunate, and we waste our Warrior Limb right there. But doesn't matter because we're gonna bring out our Desert Twister, and we're just gonna go end them right here as well. Uh, we send off uh, Heirloom finally to basically pop their back row. We haven't seen any other Amazon's monsters roaring into, so we don't need that Heirloom anymore. We pop the Dust Tornado, uh, which is unfortunate. We want to pop like the Kunai or the Windstorm, whatever they have. The, the cards that forces us, us into defense. But we know the Blade Knight is face down. They can't really Kunai the best out of it. We swing in here for the attack and destroy the Blade Knight and swing him. Try to swing in here for game. It could be a Kunai and it turns out to be another Dust Tornado. So right here, we won the duel, uh, two and one, uh, with a quite a neat comeback. You know, we lost the first one and we just won the second and third one straight, uh, fairly easily. The second one was not as easy, but this third duel was fairly uh, in, in a much better breeze in our sort of situation and control. So it's really really neat. And uh, yeah, that basically rounds off this uh, speed duel match duel video right here. If you guys enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button. If you guys want to see the deck profile, once again, it will be out in a few days. So once again, be sure to subscribe. And if you guys enjoyed the speed through content here on this channel, comment down below and see what you guys like. You know, definitely comment and see your suggestions on this whole speed through match right here. And if you guys want to see even more speed through content, uh, definitely consider subscribing uh, to the channel.